G'day guys, welcome back. My name's Dylan. If you're new around here, I uh, just put a PhD in physics on hold to create some fun things. And one of those things, the AI project is now out for free. So if you guys want to come get a new interior design of any room in your house, you just go take a picture of it, upload it to my site, AIMyInterior.com, and we'll give you a free new design in any style you want in just a few seconds. Also doing this with cars, and that's also about to launch. So come help your boy out, come check it out in the description. Let's get into the video. So today we're watching Speed Comparison 3D, fastest man-made objects. I'm excited about this one. I actually know what the fastest man-made object is. Actually the two, like the one before that as well. So we'll see if they're in the video. We'll see if they got this correct. I remember looking it up when I was writing this short story once and it's kind of fun. It's a fun little fact. At least the second place one is and then the fastest one won't, probably won't surprise you. But anyway, should be awesome. World's first bicycle, 1817, four kilometers per hour. Wait, wait, we're off to a bad start. <laughs> Does that say kilometers hour? Goodness, they mean kilometers per hour. If they're gonna have the hour next to the kilometer, it needs to have a little to the power of negative one. So I had to point this out because it's kind of painful. <laughs> and if this is gonna be on every object, it's gonna be really painful. Oh dear. Very nice. <laughs> Here comes Usain Bolt. This is a cool video. Kilometers hours, oh my god. Average speed. I mean, Usain Bolt, what can he run? Ah, oh, there he is. I was going to say, I thought it was like 39 kilometers per hour. This is actually painful, guys. Is that just a regular old cycle bike? I feel like I could ride faster than 45 kilometers per hour. I'm not going to lie. Don't know if I can run quite as fast as you said, Bolt. Really? It only went 48 kilometers per hour. Very interesting. Props to whoever made this video. It's actually awesome. Cheetah. 130. They should have chucked in like the fastest car and fastest motorbike we have. I don't know what sort of speed they're doing these days. Oh wait, they have Spirit of Australia. What the hell is that? <laughs> I feel like I should know what that is, being from Australia, but I have no idea. World water record. I kind of want to look into that. The Spirit of Australia on October 8th, 1978. Uh, Blaring Dam. I have no idea what that is. On opposite direction runs, uh, say kilometers per hour. What's this car? SSC Tuatara. Damn, that's, that looks awesome. 130 kilometers. I should put that in my AI My Cars uh, thing I'm making. <laughs> that looks so cool. You, you can turn your car literally into a hypercar, supercar. It's so much fun. What the hell is that? Fastest motorcycle. Flying blue pill. Just blue pilling everyone. Boeing 7 by 7 Thrust SSC. World's fastest thrust supersonic car. Speed of sound. I was wondering if they were going to add that. It's good that they've added that. So here's an easy way to understand the sonic boom. So like when something noisy is coming towards you, right? The noise gets louder and louder until the thing passes nearest you, right? That's when it's loudest. And then it gets less and less loud as it goes past. Now, if that thing is going faster than sound, you won't hear it coming, right? The thing is traveling faster than its own noise. So there's no noise built up as it approaches. Then it passes you and the noise level goes from zero to loudest all at once, right? One second later, the thing is hundreds of meters away and way less noisy. So it sounds like a thunderclap, you see? The sonic boom, that's 
what happens. And as this thing travels around faster than the speed of sound, it'll actually produce a continuous sonic boom. So if you're standing under it and it travels over you, you know, no matter where it travels, you will hear this sonic boom. And that's if you're in this, you know, flight path, it's actually called the boom carpet. If you're wondering how uh, pilots handle this sonic boom, they actually can't hear it. Uh, it's equivalent to like the wake of a ship and you, they can see the pressure waves and stuff. Uh, but like, just like a, a ship, the, 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 like the wake behind a ship, that's the boom carpet unrolls behind the plane. It should be getting into the jet. Oh, Blackbird. It's still killing me. North American X-15. Look at that thing, man. Hypersonic rocket slave. I have never heard of this. That's cool. NASA X-43. Fastest jet aircraft. Wow. It's an actual space station. Yep. Maintaining its orbit. You have to be moving fast to do that because it's constantly in a free fall around the planet. So it's kind of like balancing out a bunch of things. Now we're getting into sort of you know, velocities that'll allow you to escape our little atmosphere. Special. Still not quite there. Apollo 10. It was moving. 40,000 kilometers per hour. So this is just man-made objects. I wonder if they have another video where they just do fastest objects. I'd watch that as well. Ulysses. 40,000. Sure is quick. Stardust. Artificial satellite. It kind of gets hard to put this into perspective now. Voyager 2. Voyager 1 is my favorite space probe ever. It could take, what, like 40,000 years to get to the nearest star? New Horizons. Uh, gave us those pretty pictures of Pluto. The first time ever. Before, we only had pixelated, really terrible pictures. I remember telling some people when I was in, like, year 10. No, sorry. I was year out of school and they didn't believe me that we didn't really have pictures of Pluto and then a couple years later you yeah, know all over the news Pioneer 11 gets quicker I'm I'm interested to see if they put on uh, the really fun one that was the fastest man-made object for a long time it's actually really fun <laughs> here it is this is the one I, I'm so glad they included it. So there's a little bit of a story behind this one. This manhole cover was launched into space at something like six times escape velocity. Except it probably didn't happen. A quick little recap of this legend, right? This Operation Plum. It was a series of, I think, 29 explosions meant to study, you know, a bunch of different aspects of nuclear bombs, like how to contain the fallout from an underground explosion. So to test this, the military basically set off a bunch of explosions at the bottom of a long well covered with these metal caps. And in the Pascal B test, when the cap was welded to the top of the well, the blast hit the cap so hard that according to, you know, one of the analysts of the time, Brownlee, I think his name was, it reached six times escape velocity. And according to legend, became the first object launched into space. After the test, when this manhole cover wasn't found, he kind of just forgot about it, you know, thinking maybe it vaporized in the atmosphere or something. And it was only later when he got credit for the world's first space launch and criticism for not kind of taking the atmosphere into account when he calculated uh, the velocity of this manhole cover that he kind of realized that the legend of this manhole cover getting launched at six times the escape velocity of Earth it kind of taken on a life of its own. And this Dr. Brownlee actually hates this legend and even wrote an essay on it in 2002 saying how, you know, it's just BS. I just thought that was so funny that the fastest man-made object for a long time was a manhole cover accidentally launched into space from a nuclear test. Um, and then... I'm interested to see there's still half a video and like this was second place, I thought. Helios 2. Well, okay, I'm wrong. <laughs> Juno. Parker. That's the one that I... I'm pretty sure this is meant to be the fastest man-made object. Yeah, it is. So what is... What is okay, episode 2. 
I see. So there was only a couple between second place, wasn't there? Helios won and Juno. Juno does like, you know, it's checking out Jupiter and things like that. It's got some pretty pictures of Europa. I'm pretty sure, I think. Parker. So this is the probe that kissed the sun, we say. It's, uh, you know, we launched it towards the sun, which requires a tremendous amount of energy. That's why it's moving so freaking fast. Um, and, you know, it actually kissed the sun. It entered the, um, did it enter the corona of the sun? Where uh, the very outermost layer of the sun. All right, well, clearly this isn't a man-made object. Speed of light uh, between the Earth and the moon, 300,000 kilometers per second. Yeah, between the Earth and the moon, what, the, I think it's about on average 350,000 kilometers. You drive that, you know, average lifetime in the car, you get like, what, 400,000 kilometers out of it, 350. So you'd, that gives you a good sense of how far the moon is away. 1.3 seconds, yeah. So if the, Earth, if the moon blew up, you wouldn't know about it for 1.3 seconds, if you could see it. We got that flying blue pill. Blue pilling everyone at the speed of sound. Back to 757. Ooh, that was cool. So just really quickly before I explain what the hell this the speed of sound is, like why there's a kind of a limit, you also have to understand what the hell even is sound, right? It's just pressure waves. So our atmosphere is filled of like gas, okay? So lots of tiny little molecules right and the way sound moves through this medium is they bump into each other so it's not like a wave like this when i say a wave i mean where a particle bumps into a particle in front of it that particle bumps into a particle in front of it right and so the the wave is like this it like pushes on the stuff in front of it and so uh you know a wave that's just going to be quicker bumping okay so do you kind of see so like a so like a longer wavelength that'll be bumping more slowly into those particles. So I hope that makes sense. In a normal gas, the speed of sound is limited by the speed of which the molecules travel. Okay, so clearly no property of the gas can travel faster than the speed of the individual molecules. And, you know, but some properties of the gas can travel more slowly. And you can actually change this by just changing the temperature. Um, like the frequency or the strength of the interactions between molecules, right, has something to do with this. So the pressure in the room also has an effect on the speed of sound. Um, you know, if you increase the atmospheric pressure, that's probably going to lead to stiffer interactions at higher speeds. So one way I like to visualize the speed of sound is by playing with a slinky. So like... If you hold the slinky with different amounts of tension, right, and then pluck it, you, you should be able to see uh, the waves traveling at different speeds. Even had the uh, little... I love how they're adding the sonic booms as well. It's 10,000 kilometers. That's awesome. That doesn't look that quick. Surely it would be quicker than that. Wow. Look, there's a space shuttle all the way up there. Parker Solar Probe. I appreciate this comparison. This is awesome. Wow, it just shows you how slowly Voyager 2 is moving <laughs> and Voyager 1. And then now, you know, kind of on the edges of the solar system, some say it's beyond the solar system, but really, you know, they're not taking into account the Oort cloud. And in my opinion, it kind of has to leave the Oort cloud to leave our solar system. The Oort cloud is still way out there. Anyway, guys, that'll do for today. Make sure you come check out the AI, my interior project I just launched. Make sure you subscribe. It really helps the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.